Everyone's talking about context engineering right now, and for good reason. Now that we're in the era of AI agents, traditional prompt engineering is no longer enough. Agents need to be fed the right information at the right time, but that context can get polluted and maxed out very quickly when agents can work independently for long periods of time, where they can access the web, knowledge bases, and much more. In this video, I'll be showing you nine different context engineering strategies and techniques within N810, which can make your agents far more effective and also help mitigate against a bunch of issues we'll talk about later. I'll be going through all of these in the video, but if you want to get a head start, we'll be sharing all of the blueprints with our community. At a high level, the context window is the total amount of text that your AI model can handle at any one time, and your AI agents are constrained by this. As Andre Carpathi put it, LLMs are like a new kind of operating system, but the context window is like the RAM, which serves as the model's limited working memory. The first context engineering strategy we're going to go through is short-term memory. And while this is easy to do within N810, it's really important to understand exactly what's going on. So I have a simple AI agent within N810 here, and you can select simple memory if you do not have an external database set up. And this number here represents the number of past interactions that the model receives as context. I'm thinking of a number here, it's saved that to the simple memory. And now I'll ask it, what was that number? Let's check the simple memory. And now we have that number. So it now has context of the previous messages. Okay, now instead of using simple memory, we're gonna use Postgres instead. So I'm gonna delete this and connect that to Postgres chat memory. So let's go into Superbase. And within this, we see we have type human and the content, and then we have the response. And so now we can see the past messages directly within this database. But remember, it's still short-term memory. This is not a RAG system. It's still only gonna remember the last few messages. Whatever you've defined within the context window here is all it's going to take into account. The context window of LLMs are measured in tokens. And if you go into the model, so in this case, the OpenAI chat model, on the right-hand side, I can see the token usage for that previous call to the LLM. So this is a good way for you to monitor your token usage. Next up is long-term memory. There are lots of different ways to do this within N810, but one of the easiest ways is just to use a Google Doc. In this case, when a chat message is received, the AI agent has the choice to update its long-term memories. So it decides if that message contains information that will be useful in the future. And the AI agent can then use this information long into the future. So I'll just start with a simple message. My name is Alan. From there, it's going to get the previous memories where there's currently nothing in there. and it's going to the LLM, it's saved something to the long-term memories, and it's going to respond to us. Now, if I go into the Google Doc, it's added this line. The user's name is Alan. Now, if I follow up with that to say, I use the NHN automation platform, from there, I'm also expecting that to be saved to the long-term memory as well. And you see that's been saved separately. But if I ask another message like, what is nine times five? Then I'm expecting that not to be saved to the long-term memory. And there you go, it saved it to the short-term memory, but not the long-term memory. And the document was not updated. So instead of a Google Doc, you could also use a Google Sheet, you could use Airtable, you could use a database, you could use lots more. You could get the AI agent to categorize the type of memories. You could even dump this into a RAG system, which we'll talk about later on. But it's the same concept. When a chat message is received, it gets the memories, so it's gonna get the content of that document. This is just using a Google Doc node, we're using the get operation, and I've pasted in the doc URL. And on the right hand side, I see the content of the document. And then within the AI agent, I'm gonna go into that. Within the user message, I'm passing in the chat input, but I'm also passing the retrieved memories from that Google Doc. And if I expand out the system message, I've defined the overall behavior or operating procedure that I want this agent to follow and how I wanted to use this long-term memory. So I have this tool, save long-term memories, and I'm asking it to summarize key personal info clearly and briefly, keep it relevant and actionable. It should only be one or two sentence maximum. And I've provided an example. This is probably pretty similar to what ChatGPT is doing whenever you send a message where it deems to be memorable and it updates the long-term memory. Next up, we have the idea of context expansion via tool calling. Tools really are what give AI agents their power. We can hook up lots of different tools and let the AI agents decide which ones to call depending on the message. Within this, I've added a perplexity tool, which will give this access to the live web. I'll ask it to give me the biggest AI news items of the week. In this case, the AI agent will not have that within context. So it's gonna to choose to message perplexity and that will dynamically inject that into the context. We've got a response from perplexity and on the chat on the left-hand side, the agent has responded with a summarized version of what we got from perplexity. But if we go into that agent, let's look at the logs on the top right. Here you can walk through exactly what the AI agent did. 
At the start, it got the short term memory from Postgres, and then it sent our message to the OpenAI chat model, which is give me the biggest AI news of the week. There's no rendered response for this, but if you look at the JSON, that OpenAI responded with the tool that needs to be called. The response from Perplexity goes back to the agent, and then that gets sent back to OpenAI. But the entire response that we got back from Perplexity gets dumped into that message to OpenAI. That's fine in this case, but you can quickly see how the context could get very quickly polluted if you're not careful about what tools you're giving your agents access to. If you're using deep research, the results could be significantly larger than this. And if you're using multiple tool calls, then again, that's going to add to your token usage. We'll talk about ways you can manage this later on. Next up, we have retrieval augmented generation, which we've gone through many times on the channel. RAG allows us to make large amounts of data available to our agents. Our pipelines break the documents up into chunks. It stores that data within a vector database that we can semantically query and retrieve later. In our recent multimodal RAG video, we loaded up the entire content of this 39 page PDF, including text and images and tables into our RAG system. Then when we ask the agent a question, it can then query that data from the vector store and respond with the relevant information grounded in that data. And in this case, it also even includes images. In this other example here, I have a simple Google folder and this data ingestion workflow is going to iterate through all of those files and then save those and vectorize them to the vector store within Superbase. The content of this document is now represented within this vector store and I've attached this vector store to the agent. So I can now ask it a question like, what are your shipping policies? And when it does that, it should query the vector store, try and get relevant information from that knowledge base and then respond based on that. In this case, we've received the top results for that query that's been sent back to us via the agent. And if I examine that Superbase vector store execution, we see it's got back a bunch of responses and then it will load that into the context of the AI model. RAG is an incredibly powerful concept and Daniel on our channel created a full masterclass that takes you through the entire process of setting up your pipelines and retrieving your data. So definitely check that out. And we go through lots of other advanced concepts like hybrid RAG, agentic RAG, multimodal RAG, and lots more. RAG systems respond with a very dynamic context and you generally need to be quite careful about how you engineer that for your use case. And again, it's important to note when we go into the agent, we go into the logs and we look at the OpenAI chat model. And within this tool call, we see here that the entire response, so every single chunk of data we got back from the vector store was dumped straight into this tool message and sent to OpenAI. So again, it's not like there's more sophisticated things going on behind the scenes here. All of the result is just dumped into the context window of the AI agent. And we have the same constraints we have for every other tool. So you've probably realized by now that the context can very quickly balloon and get out of hand when you start hooking up external tools to your agent. And this is where the next strategy can really come in useful. And that is the concept of context isolation. In our community, we have an AI agent team that can handle the generation of a newsletter. This AI agent can research, it can write, it can publish, it can check analytics, it can post to social media, and it can also manage subscribers. But each of these tasks are handled within a separate sub agent. And the main reason for this is that there are a limited number of tools that an AI agent can really handle before things just start getting too unwieldy. The current models would not really be able to follow the overall operating procedure to be able to deal with all of those tools. And most importantly, it's too much context for this agent to handle at once. So within each of these tools, if we click into one of them, we see another workflow is selected. So in this case, it's this researcher workflow. We have this workflow input trigger, but that triggers another agent. And the same applies for all of these other sub agents. And this is a multi agent system. The key here is that each of the sub agents manage their individual context. They all have their individual memory. And when responses are sent to the sub agent, such as the entire markdown of an external page or a Google search, then this researcher agent chooses how to handle that and then responds back to the main agent without polluting the overall context of the main agent. So this idea of context isolation is one of the main reasons why multi agent teams are so useful. And you can take this concept as far as you want. For example, on our channel, Daniel created a multi-layered, multi-agent team. We have this main overall HAL 9001 agent, which has access to each of these supervisor agents. For example, when I click into this productivity supervisor, we can see that that has access to multiple other sub-agents. And then if I go to this calendar agent, this is the third level deep. 
and that calendar agent then has access to multiple tools. This is certainly not always required, and MCP can also help to simplify things a little bit, but it shows the potential of this type of architecture. So if you want to call external tools without polluting the entire context of the main agent, then using sub-agents or sub-workflows is one of the only ways to do it natively within NHN. Next up, I'd like to explain summarizing context, which is a type of context compression. I've already touched on this within the previous multi-agent team, but I really wanted to explain this using a simpler example because this is a great strategy to manage your context. It's a slightly contrived example where I've just hooked up a HTTP request as a tool so we can then ask that to scrape an external site and it should hopefully do that and send the results back to the AI agent. Here I'll just ask it what is on the page and then I've added in the URL of our website and then it should give us a response. It's now returned with the response, which is good. If we go into the HTTP request for that, the response from this was the entire HTML of the page. So there's quite a lot going on here. I'll go through a nicer way of doing this in a few minutes, but this is a good example. So we have the entire HTML of the page that gets sent back to the AI agent. And if we look at the logs, again, the, the entire HTML of the page was dumped into the AI model, and that ends up within this context. And that's all fine, but if we have multiple tools, and if we're scraping a lot of data, that could become quite a problem. And an alternative way to do this is to create a separate workflow. And again, we're isolated in the context here of let's say we have a new workflow and I'm gonna select when executed by another workflow. The add field, I'm gonna select URL. And then from there, I'm gonna add in a HTTP request. I've executed the previous node here. I'm gonna drag in the URL for that. And then we should be good from there. From here, instead of just responding back with the entire HTML of the page, we're gonna pass this into an AI model. So I'm gonna select an LLM chain. I'm gonna press the delete button here for the moment. I'm gonna pin some data. Then I've just passed in this URL as a test and I'll click execute workflow. Now it should have scraped that page. Yeah, it's looking good. Now I'm gonna pass this into the LLM chain. I'm gonna select a model. I'm gonna select open AI chat model. And here we can just use GPT 4.1 mini again and go into the LLM chain. Now the user prompt within this LLM chain I've just written, summarize the following and provide the most important three key points, one sentence each. I'm gonna click execute step. This should respond with a pretty concise few sentences, which is summarizing the content of this. We have a fairly concise summary on the right hand side now. And now we can call this workflow from within our main agent. So I'll delete this HTTP request tool and I'll select call NHN workflow tool and I'll select that workflow input I'll let the model define that workflow input, which is a URL. We define that at the very start of this. From here, I'm just adding a description, get data from external website. Now I'm going to restart this chat session. Again, I'll send the same message as previously, what is on this page. Now it's gonna call this external NHN workflow. We've got back a response from the workflow and then the AI agent processed the response and then sent us back a message in the chat. And when we look at the logs for the AI agent, you see that there's no data here showing any of the HTML of the page. The context has been completely isolated into that other workflow. And all we get back from the workflow tool is a summary of this page. So it's very easy to summarize context using a sub workflow. And within the sub workflow, you can either use an LLM chain like this, or you can also use a sub agent. Next up, I'd like to look at this deep research blueprint, which touches on context routing and staging. This is a great blueprint within the NHN template library where it can take a form submission, which is a research topic, and that can do full deep research on that topic. Deep research requires extremely careful management of the context because every page that you scrape can add massive amounts of data to that context. So this is quite an advanced workflow where it's executing the same sub workflow multiple times and it's managing how it's passing the context between different nodes. For example, here it's researching topics one by one, and from here it's compiling those learnings. But here it's not just delegating the entire context to an agent for it to figure it all out. This workflow has defined a pretty deterministic route for how it's gonna handle the context of such a large amount of data. And sometimes that's just simply required for a task. Throughout this process, the SERP queries and the learnings can take a very, very long time to process. For example, as it says here, it can take up to an hour or more on higher settings. From here, it's then using a chain of thought model to generate a report using all of those insights. So this is quite a complex example, but it's a good example of how you could use NHN to handle very long running tasks with very large amounts of data. So if you wanna check out the template for that, then check the link in the description. 
Another area that you should definitely give some consideration is the format of your context. For example, in this case, we used a HTTP request to get the entire HTML response for that page. And then we're passing that into the AI model. There's a lot of extra information in here and it's in a HTML format. Instead of sending the entire HTML of the page into the AI model, we could convert this to Markdown. So we could use this Markdown node and then HTML to Markdown. I'll just drag and drop in the data from the previous node over here. And then from there, we can click Execute Step. And now we've really formatted that result into something that's a lot more manageable and it's in a format that's far more LLM friendly. We can now pass this into our LLM chain. So now this should auto map to the LLM chain because it's using this JSON variable here. Now I can execute this workflow using the same pinned data because it's going to call the same URL. Because we've sent far less text into OpenAI, we've used far less tokens, it's cheaper to process and far quicker. That's an example of how you can quickly change the format. If you're scraping external sites, you could alternatively use a service like firecrawl.dev, which will return back the markdown directly instead of the HTML. And you could then just add that directly as a tool to the AI agent. But there are plenty of cases where you will want to either summarize or format your context separately before sending it back to the main agent or main workflow. Another approach is context trimming, which can also be really useful. So let's take this previous workflow we have, and instead of dumping all of the markdown from the page, we can go into this basic LLM chain, and we have this simple expression that's just gonna take the first thousand characters from the data, and we're gonna send that into the AI model. So this is a simple example, but it might help for your use case. It might reduce costs and also speed things up. There are lots of other ways we can reduce the amount of data going back to the agent. For example, for the short term memory, we can just reduce the context window length. And if you're using a vector database, you could reduce the amount of chunks being returned for each query. So all of these examples should illustrate the point that we've gone beyond just simple prompt engineering. We're now hooking in external sources and RAG systems into our agents, which makes the context a lot more dynamic. So you need to use whatever strategies required to be able to manage that as necessary. This article by Langchain hits on a lot of key points around context engineering that are really useful to know. And here they summarize some of the main issues that can be caused by a long context, which was originally from this article, also linked in the description. If you don't manage your context and it gets out of control, you could get context poisoning where a hallucination makes its way into the context. When that happens, then the LLM can stay faithful to that original incorrect fact or hallucination and then reproduce that or make incorrect assumptions based on that. Context distraction is also an issue here as well, whereby if you have way too much information in your context window, the LLM might not be able to understand what to pick out and you might have your needle in a haystack problem. Or you may also have unnecessary or contradictory information within your context, which can then negatively affect the outcome as well. So as you're building AI agents and automations, context engineering is one of the most important skills you need to have. If you're looking to dive deeper into AI and create agents that really work, then check out the link in the description to our community, where you'll get access to all of our templates. We've got live workshops where you can chat to us directly, as well as an active discussion board and access to all of our courses. Thanks for watching.